Hey, and just a quick reminder that the audio-only versions of these Vital MX interviews are available on the Vital MX podcast page. Search for it anywhere you get your pods and let your friends know about it. What's up, guys? Dark Side here again for Vital MX. Today, I've got the newest member of the AmPro Yamaha Racing Team, Zach Osborne. Blue Crew, bro. Heck yeah, dude. What's up? Not much, man. Excited to talk to you as always. But uh, yeah, under some different circumstances this time let's be clear this is not a yamaha brand ambassador role correct that's correct okay so as the newest member of ampro yamaha racing team let's let's get to a michael Lindsay question first because this was he set this interview up uh the elephant in the room you kind of retired from racing due to the issues with your back has that improved have you found some uh therapies that are working how are you feeling yeah i mean I knew eventually, right, my back would be good enough to do something, but just the timeline was very unsettled and like, you know, kind of the only option to settle a square timeline was have surgery and I didn't want to do that. So that was kind of my two options um, from their side was like, you know, do something about it or we can't really continue, you know what I mean? And I understand that, like I wasn't trying to take their money and sit on the sidelines, you know? So, um, for me, it was just kind of giving myself the time that I needed and, um, learning about it all and kind of finding the methods that I needed to, to, to make it happen. Okay. Yeah. But but it's feeling good though, huh? Yeah, it's been good. I mean, you know, I rode, I didn't ride a ton this year, but I did, did it, uh, you know, a decent amount of hours and decent amount of races on different stuff and whatnot. And, um, I'm in, I'm in a decent spot with it. I mean, I feel, you know, confident enough to take this, take this position, um, as a racer, like you said, it's not a brand ambassador role. It's a racing job. And, um, hopefully, you know, I can live up to the hype a little bit. It was, uh, a very warm welcome yesterday when, when we announced it all, you know, obviously there's always some haters, but I really didn't see very many. That's good. Yeah. That's always a good thing. Boy, whew, keyboard warriors. Gotta love them. Uh, yeah. Michael Lindsay also said a few years back, and you spoke of this many times, that you mentioned you wanted to race some GNCC stuff post-Supercross, motocross. How excited are you that the plan is finally being fulfilled? And did you ever have a moment where you thought, man, this may not happen? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, um, I I knew, you know, kind of clearly after a couple of months of retiring and then kind of fishing a little bit that it wasn't going to happen where I was. with Husky and, um, that, you know, nobody wants damaged goods and, you know, a retired guy. Right. So, um, super fortunate and grateful to Ampro and just everybody kind of involved in this deal, um, to put it together and to believe in me and, um, give me the opportunity. Okay. So you've been with Husky since I think 2014, you won a few championships over the last couple of years, you've been in the brand ambassador role, which seemed like it started a little rocky, why the switch to Yamaha? Um, yeah, I mean, so after, uh, you know, I'm super grateful, first of all, to Husky and all that they've done for me, the positions that they've put me into, be a champion and, um, you know, achieve the success that we did. Um, probably in a time where not many people were fishing for me, right? I had an offer at Geico and I had an offer at Husky and I ended up taking the offer at Husky because I felt like, you know, eventually... I. I didn't know that I was going to be super successful, you know, in the in, in part of my career. And um, I just, I felt like that was the better decision for me at the time because they had a better off-road program than, than Honda did. So that was the direction I took. And um, after I kind of was told I wasn't going to have the, um, they kind of cooked up the, the ambassador thing and I didn't really have anything else going so that was where where i ended up but you know after a little bit of fishing and whatnot i i understood that there was not going to be any opportunities for me there um to to take a spot like this where you know on the race team to go racing um really at any capacity so um for me it was the the spot that i want you know the spot that i could land if i wanted to continue racing yeah, so you did make it clear to Husky, hey, I would like to race off road, and it just wasn't an opportunity. Yeah, it just wasn't wasn't there. I mean, um, I had conversations with with the right people, and the the, the interest level just wasn't there. How how did that make you feel? I, I mean, I feel like it, with everything you've done for Husky, it seems like they could probably make it happen. Was that kind of a gut punch? Um, no, not really. I mean, yeah, it's it's a lot to really like 
unpack, but no, I, it is what it is. Right. I mean, like I said, I'm super grateful to them for, um, for the years that we had, but, um, it was just time to move on. Okay. Now I know you're new to this team, but you've done GNCCs in the past. What is the vibe like with a team like a pro am, uh, and pro Yamaha compared to supercross motocross. What's the difference at a actual event? Um, like for me, it's more like what I remember from, from Europe, you know, like a very family atmosphere, um, just a more laid back style of things. Um, I, I think that that's kind of always been the draw and the appeal for me to, to the off-road side of the industry is just that there's just not so much, I don't want to say corporate involvement, but like, it's just a little bit less square and, you know, it's not a, it's not such a, a huge grind like we know with travel and, mm-hmm. um, you know, so much riding and all that. Like, of course it's still a huge job. I'm not like taking it lightly or, um, trying to downplay it in any way, but it's just a different, um, different style of doing things. I would say. Yeah. And you're very family oriented, obviously. So I think that's probably better for you. Yeah, it, it is. It's um that was a huge piece of it, you know. Both Brittany and I really just kind of felt like we weren't we weren't done, I guess you would say, and um that there was still something on the table for us to achieve or accomplish and um things got cut a little bit short. So for us it was like kind of taking a step back, looking at what we can do and um what makes the most sense for our family. Obviously we just grew by one, so yeah, congrats. Um, he's going to be jumping right in at the deep end, but um, yeah, overall this just seemed like the right move for us. Now you're going to be racing the XC two class, which is the two fifty class. Was that by your choice team's choice? Why, why the two fifty class? Yeah, that was my choice. Um, I just, you know, I don't feel like it's realistic for me to just jump in in, in the four fifty class. I mean, that's like asking Stuart Ben to go race, 450 supercross right like that's a a pretty big uh diving off point um for me it was just um i need to learn those places i need to learn those tracks I, those guys have been racing them since they were kids like you know as i grew up as a motocrosser they grew up as gncc off-road riders so um for me to just start in the 450 class i felt like was was a big um big ask and something that i i felt like going in the 250 class would be kind of more bang for your buck from all sides of the the coin. Do you have a time frame or do you have a set time you think you'll be involved with this venture? Do you have goals, championships? What are your, where's your headspace? Um, so it's a two year deal. I'm racing one year in 250 class XC2 and, uh, one year in XC1. Um, I would love to win some races and, you know, be in the hunt and, um, just, really enjoy myself. I think if that all comes together, then, you know, we can, we can do some damage. I don't know where I stand. You know, I don't know what it looks like. The third hour is a a whole nother level of fitness and racing. Um, you know, I've been doing two hour races all year long with, you know, medium amount of training, not really any sort of regiment rented program. So, um, for me, it's just getting all that stuff in place, getting my riding going, getting things happening. Um, we have a big test coming up in a couple of weeks, a uh, week long test in South Carolina, um, with, with the team and with factory connection and, um, some of the big players that are involved in this. And I think that that is going to be a big piece, just getting, getting on the two fifty, getting things started and, um, heading into the first race in the right direction. Okay. So you said four fifties next year is the plan. Let's say hypothetically you finish second overall in the series, whether that's likely or unlikely, I don't know enough about off-road, but let's say you finish second points, miss the championship by a couple points. Do you say, mm, maybe I stay in 250 and go for a championship or do you want to move up to the 450 and that's the end goal? Yeah, I think the end goal is the 450, but I mean, obviously they, they are, banking on my, my capabilities, which, uh, I, I am too, you know, um, I, I don't think it's realistic for me to just say, I'm going to just ride the 250 class, blow these guys away and then go in the 450 class. Um, I, I'm well aware that that's not realistic. Like I need to get into some racing and kind of get my, get my feet under me and do some learning, learn strategy, learn, you know, saving energy, learn the bike a little bit more. And, um, I, I don't really know. I mean, the contract's written that it's XC2 this year, XC1 next year. So um, that's that's kind of the plan. Okay. Now, you look, you're coming off your pro career as a motocross, supercross rider, as a vet of the sport. 
now you're sort of the new guy. I know you have some experience, but you're, you're basically the new guy. What transfers from what you know from the past and what is the, going to be the most difficult thing to learn? Do you think? Um, what transfers is just kind of the work ethic that I have and the, the no, uh, I guess the knowledge of, um, what it really takes to just kind of feel good grind and, um, make, make the job happen. Um, the, the biggest thing to learn is just like, you know, um, like I had a bike, bike malfunction at Ironman and, um, I needed to go straight back to the pits and I, I needed to find out how to do that. Right. Like those guys know the property, they know every gravel road that goes from here to there and how to get back. Like, it's just little stuff like that, that you don't even really think of until, um, it's time to, <laughs> to use that knowledge. So for me, it's just going to be learning all the knickknacks ins and outs right away. And in a way that I can, um, kind of manage things and not get too far behind the eight ball right off the bat. It's interesting. I didn't know there was a quicker way back at Ironman cause I would have used it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay. Are you planning, I assume with the birth of your third child, Owen, you, you plan on staying in Florida. That's the goal. Yeah. Yeah. The, the goal is to stay in Florida. Obviously I'm going to have to do some traveling this year to ride some rocks and, um, learn some new stuff, but, um, we're getting a motor home and we're going to just make, make a family affair of it. Right. Like we always do. Um, so that was a big piece too, just to get to travel and kind of do it in a different way. We already kind of have some, some things mapped out for the kids and, some sites we want to visit and whatnot. So, um, also with, with this schedule, we have like a lot of racing from January to June and then we have June, July, August and half of September completely off. So, um, that's, that's another big piece is just like, it's a, a more lax schedule. And then after that, there's only three races to end the season. So, um, there's, there's a lot of perks to the way this thing operates compared to, supercross and motocross. Yeah. I can see with that whole summer off, maybe you show up at a national easy now easy <laughs> we'd love to see it man we'd love to see it uh you mentioned earlier doing some of these two-hour races with not a lot of training what is the training regimen for a guy like yourself what are you thinking for these type of races i mean and we already said they're long races some people don't even finish i don't know if you realize that zach but some people just quit <laughs> in the middle of them um yeah so for me it's just like when i ride off-road um my heart rate's a lot lower i think mostly because of the G loads not as high and like, I'm just, I've done a ton of hours on, on a motorcycle. So I'm pretty efficient. You know, I, I look back at some files from this year that I had and, um, like kind of averaging one sixties, 165. That's something that I've never done before. So for me, it's just working in that mid zone, like kind of sweet spot, if you will. Um, training wise, that's something I've never, ever done. Um, so it's just kind of adjusting, making some adjustments to that stuff. And then, um, obviously all of my stuff to, to keep my back strong and keep my, my body strong to where we can, uh, you know, grind through this whole season. Yeah, that's fantastic. I, I've been training too, Zacho. I'm getting in shape, man. Cause next year at Ironman, I will finish. You're going to win. Mm, you're going to win industry class next that's, year. Darcy. That's like asking if you're going to win the two, the, the championship this year too. <laughs> uh, maybe you actually have a better oh. chance of winning the championship than me winning the, the industry class. I, it's I a win know. if I finish. You'll finish. You'll hey, be fine. I did a an enduro Stack. here locally, or uh, yeah, I did an enduro just two weeks ago here. Didn't finish that one either. Really? Well, okay. Third like seg- a time card enduro, or what kind of enduro are we talking so, about? So yeah, there was four. They called them tests. I think you said like tests, yeah, and yeah, they were yeah. timed. And I was actually doing pretty well. My buddy checked. I would have finished second if I had finished. <laughs> but a guy crashed really bad in front of me on the third test, and I stopped and I waited till medics got there it was like an hour and a half before they could get into him dang and then they life flighted him out by then i had timed out so i didn't even get to finish wow they wouldn't give you your time back you know i didn't ask i was just was there there was another girl that stopped that was like a nurse in training and her dad came down and was like yeah you timed out so you can't finish so i just assumed that was the case and i yeah i was pretty gutted after that watching that guy lay there and you know and i was I'm, i was done yeah it's not exactly a, a like a a joy thing, right? Like no. that kind of kills the vibe. Yeah, it definitely did. But I, I am enjoying the off-road. I want to do more, but it's, it's a lot harder than I thought it would be. Uh, there's definitely like a bunch of different elements to it that you don't really consider until, um, like I said a minute ago, like yeah. you need those skills and then you're like, Oh wow, I should have done this. Right. Yeah. And like the Iron Man thing, I, that was a lot of fun. I, I didn't really feel tired. I just crashed really bad. 
and you know, I was hurting, but the one I did this enduro was super slow and rocky and it was actually way more difficult to me than Iron Man was. I, there was stuff I was really? riding. And I was like, why in the F are we riding on this? This is stupid. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Just, uh, it was not fun at all. Iron Man, I had fun. This Enduro, I did not have any fun whatsoever. Yeah, I was blown away with like how hilly Iron Man is. You know, like you think of Indiana as like flatlands, and I know the hills aren't massive, but it was there was a lot of elevation. Yeah, yeah, it was a good time. It really it was flowy. I thought it it was yeah, it was nice enjoyable. Trail, nice trail. Like if it were you know even medium wet, it would have been awesome. Right. Right. Yeah, definitely. Let's get back to you for a minute. A couple more things. How do you like the Yamaha? I don't know how much time you've actually spent on the, the YZ250FX. How is the bike? Um, so I haven't spent much time on the 250. Um, okay. I've done it like one day. Uh, but the team, like obviously for them, their season, the Enduros didn't end until the end of November, right? So they're trying to like kind of transition from the 22 bikes to the 23 bikes and get everything moved around and whatnot. So um, right now I'm just riding the 450 and I've actually really, really enjoyed riding it. Um, it's mostly stock, but it's, it's been really good. We got the suspension pretty dialed in and, um, I haven't had any real, yeah, qualms or issues with it. I, I've really enjoyed riding it and, um, just man, a change of scenery is good for the soul sometimes. Yeah, that's a good point. We've seen that a lot lately, right in the professional motocross side, supercross with some guys changing scenery and just, yeah, it revitalizes you a little bit. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess you don't, you may not be able to answer this so much since you haven't been on the 250 too much, but just with the 450, were there things that you felt like you had to change right away, whether it be bar wit, things like that? What are some things that you needed to make yourself comfortable? Well, obviously, um, the team runs the, the fast company flex bars Yep, and, um, they were really wide for me. So I cut an inch off of each side because, um, as you know, I run uh, the skinny uh, grip bars the micro and bars, they're yeah. working on kind of making something for me for that. So that was the, the first piece was getting some small grips, you know, smallest grips that I could find, um, which were like the ODI soft grips and then, um, getting those bars cut down and just kind of getting, getting the cockpit comfortable. But for the most part, man, I haven't really changed much at all and, um, have been kind of, yeah, just kind of riding into it and, um, trying to just feel comfortable on what I have. Okay. Uh, man, I just, Oh, Jack Chambers. Are you going to continue working with Jack? Yeah, I am. I am. I'm, I'm, uh, going to keep working with Jack. Um, obviously my involvement like day to day is a little bit less, but he's in a, a much kind of more um, stable position, let's say with being second year instead of first year. So he doesn't need like 24 seven supervision and, um, you know, he's a hard worker and he, if I tell him to do something, it's not like I have to babysit him, you know? So, um, for me, it's a pretty easy piece and we kind of started this journey together and, um, they kind of gave me something to do whenever I didn't have anything. So, um, I need to, I need to see that through. And, um, I really hope he can, can make it happen this year and turn some heads. He definitely has the potential. It's just, um, you know, finding that confidence and, um, putting himself in those positions to where he can, uh, show what he's made of. Very cool. I'm looking forward to seeing him back out there and I guess I'm gonna have to start following GNCC now. You know it. I think we're going to do a couple of them. I think ML and I are talking about doing, uh, I can't remember which one we said. Is there one at Southwick? No. There was somewhere we talked about doing one. We're doing. So my, I I haven't done them all. Obviously. Um, I haven't done the Florida one that they run currently. The old Florida one was awesome. Um, the Georgia one's cool. Uh, I'm a little bit biased, but there's one in South Carolina called camp Coker, uh, spent a lot of time there riding and stuff growing up. And that one's awesome. Uh, you get to ride a little bit of the moto track. It's kind of sandy, kind of hard packed, but a uh, really cool place. I think it was Daytona. Is there one at Daytona? Uh, there's one the day after Daytona. Okay. That's the Florida one. It's uh, yeah. in Palatka. I think we were, were talking about possibly doing that this next year. Nice. So. Yeah. So yeah. Well, Zacho, congrats, man. It's good to see you back in a position where you're racing again. I know the ambassador thing was kind of cool, but we love seeing you racing, man. So I'm excited for you. Thanks, dude. I really appreciate it. Of course. Thanks for talking to us and good luck. And we will, I'm sure we'll see you around.